The following is a presentation of TFNN. 11 seconds. You've got 10 seconds. The countdown going on right now. Morrow up to Schultz. Five seconds left in the game. Do you believe in miracles? Yes! Let's go to uh, Ilka in uh, Boston. Ilka, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Steve, seriously, you guys are unbelievable. You are doing wonders for all the traders. Well, thanks. We appreciate that. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger. This is usually the Tiger Technicians Hour uh, host, uh, 11 o'clock till 12. And uh, I'm sitting for Steve Rhodes is out today. It's my pleasure to be here. And, uh, of course, uh, Steve always has an introduction with the tremendous uh, uh, insights into uh, the cognitive process, the, the process of uh, building, uh, building esteem, building uh, confidence, uh, great stories about people who have succeeded against great odds. Um, I, I'm not going to be able to do that. That's just, uh, I love listening to that. It's just not my uh, approach. Um, it's something I do respect. It's just something that I don't do. So I can't do it. I'm not going to attempt to do it here. Other than to say that last uh, evening, I suddenly saw Phil Nicholson's name go by and uh, winning one of the uh, one of the great tournaments, and I thought to myself, "Wow, if ever!" And I thought of Steve Rhodes. I thought, "If ever there was inspiration," and it reminded me so much of the stock market. The stock market is not about getting an incredible amount of information over a short period of time and trying to apply it. Why? Because every time you apply it, it's going to be right for that moment, and then it will fail, and you won't have a backup. You have to go to another system, and you go to another system, and, another, and every time you think this is this the system, but in fact, it is the years of experience of making mistakes, of doing things right, of assessing, of, of it's the cumulative experience of success and failure with a predominance on success that makes the professional, that makes you able to come back time and again under absolute adverse circumstances and produce the goods, just like Phil Mickelson did. I mean, that is, that is great. I think it was his first uh, overseas win, and oh, I don't know. I'm just saying that's what I saw, and I was very impressed. So um, let's get straight to the market. The market hasn't opened, of course, and this is uh, the trader's edge. Steve Rhodes is out, and I'm sitting in Basil Chapman. My usual show is the Tiger Technician's Hour, and my service is the opening call. Very comprehensive. Look at the markets using the techniques. They actually uh, use this as an opportunity for those of you who, who are not familiar with me or my work, although I've been here for over 10 years at TFNN. Um, I developed a methodology way, way back, maybe 25, uh, 1980s, uh, maybe 30 years ago, called, um, well, at, at the very beginning it was called the seven, the seven wave form because I identified four peaks going to peak D in, uh, and I used to do hand charting so it was the closing price of the Dow, the Nikkei, the FTSE uh, 30 and other charts that I used to do by hand. And uh, this gave me a technique that used to identify the fourth peak as being the most important. It turns out that it's still the most important, but there were, you could go five, six, and even seven peaks higher. Then, of course, computers came of age, and I used to immediately went to computing. There were software packages that allowed me, that allowed me to do that. You used to get the full bar, the, that is the high, the low, the open, and the close. And then, of course, you got candlesticks that Steve Nissen introduced to everyone here in the Western world. So my system is basically the core of the system is a very simple one. You go from the lowest, most identifiable low bar, and you merely count each higher um, you each you count each higher peak successively higher peak one penny above the previous high bar uh, peak that is 
starts the new leg. And it's called the floating letter until you make the peak and then the letter becomes the peak. So that's a, it's just so simple in concept. There are other things that I developed over the years. For instance, we're looking at a chart right now. If you're looking at Tiger TV, and let me just jump there right now myself so that I can be of assistance to you in terms of looking at charts that are viable in the sense that, um, let me go back one, there it is. Go to the front page of TFN, and all I do is I click on, uh, I get the chart, just like you get the chart. Just, it's fascinating the way, it's, it's brilliant, in fact, the way, oops, let me get the sound down, because I was using sound last night in this, whoops. The, I, you know, I can't stand it, it's like the new cars, you've got to go, in, you lean over and you turn a dial and it goes softer, and you lean over and you turn it and it goes louder. Oh, no, today you've got to go to the computer, you've got to uh, click on this, click on that, and then you can press buttons. I can't stand it. I love the ease of, of, of whatever technology it is. I want the technology, but I want the ease of the technology as well. So I'm grumbling there. Give, give me a chance to grumble. I'm looking at the 120-minute chart of the E-mini. This is the S&P. 500 September contract, the futures. And um, it's made a peak that I call a peak F slash B, which means because it's holding the nine period moving average so well, even though the MACD, that red and green line over there, the MACD moving average convergence, divergence, 12, 26, 9 of the parameters, and the st slow stochastic, 14, 3, 3, 1, and 20%, 80% of the parameters there um, have been declining. The price is held above the black line, the nine period exponential moving average. Look how that black line just hugs. I love the exponential moving average. Everybody uses different ones. I've been for, oh, dozens and dozens of years I've been using. Mostly exponential. I do use, if you look very close, you'll see other trend lines here. I do use simple as well. I use different parameters as well. It doesn't matter. The most important is the nine EMA, the 200, that's the gold one right there. The MACD, which is made up of a series of, move, uh, of, uh, of, of, of exponential moving averages, and the slow stochastic at 96%. My rule of thumb is that above 80% is very positive. Every single book you read about a technical analysis, I bet even the, um, the, the, the uh, that when you've got to get to level 7 or whatever it is on all these different, in the, in, uh, in all these different uh, courses that you take, I bet even there they talk about 80% being overbought and 20% being oversold. I think that is so misleading. That is just completely wrong. It's taking a premise, an assumption, and a premise, and turning it into a fact. It is wrong. You can see every single chart here, when, when the price gets above 80%, it is fabulous. That's what you want. You want the stochastic to be over 80%. If you're negative, you want it to go down to 90%, 80%, and then go to 20%, and then go to the single digits. That's what you want. That's not oversold. Oversold to other conditions. It can lead to an oversold condition. But I just wanted to get that's my, my technique. So the, the, the daily chart, I'm calling it just to be because some of you might be new to this, I'm calling this leg B. It's a simple way to do it. There is another technique that I can use, but I'm, I'm calling it leg B because that's simple. The low of 1553.25 on the 24th of June um, started leg A. Leg A became peak A at 1620.50 on the 1st of July. Pulls back, holds the nine period moving average. I love that moving average. Look at it. And then it soars above, and you're in leg B right now, and a lower high bar. That is, the whole top must be higher tomorrow, and then you will get a peak B. Keeping it as simple as possible. And I suspect we're real close to peak B. Now, I just want to get that, that out of the way. Now, let's run through some other things. Since there's nothing much happening here. The futures are up 375. The E minis, the Dow futures up 36. Uh, you've got uh, gold down a little bit. Uh, you know, this is this is a great time to do some technical analysis before the opening. So now let me show you something. So we're going to go to the Dow chart, I N D U. For my subscribers, I showed them the daily, and then I showed them an intense look at the weekly and monthly charts. Wow, that is so interesting. Look at this. Move this out the way. So the Dow is in leg C with a Doji candle. I have a whole bunch of rules based on candlesticks, which I believe are different to, to many people because I, I, I treat it in a different way based on the methodology in the Chapman Wave. A close above the high of 
Friday, about 15,498.39 would be a positive. Not only would it extend the XC, but it would do other things, and it would also raise the base. A close below the low of Friday, 15,410.27, has another implication, especially if there's no new high bar today. Um, it implies that there could be a pullback, oh, something to the 15,300. Worst case basis, the nine period moving average of 15,248 will be hit, and that implies a whole bunch of other things. We are only 15,542 is the high, um, and I should have typed in the, the decimals 5,000. Whoops, what is that? 5,000, where did the 42 come from? 15,425. I thought there was a 42 there. Let me go back. Oh, it was there. Sorry. 15,542.40. That's what I want. Five, one, five, five. One, five, five. One, five, five. Four, two, point forty. That's the number we're looking at. Let me get rid of this because I do want the point forty. Why? Because it's so important. You go to point forty one, you started a new leg up in the month, in the weekly and the monthly. So where are we? We're in leg C in the in the daily. Chapman wave methodology. This is the one I'm basing it on. The MIC introducing the Chapman wave methodology. I discuss all these things. I go through. I can just grab any 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 price point. Any. Let me just show you what I look at. See, yes, a blank chart. This is the, the semiconductor index from way back, the SOX. Look, all I need to do, it just, all you see are bars. You see nothing else. There's not very much information. But all of a sudden, what I do is I put in the letters. I, I originally thought, should I have numbers? But at the time, Prechter, uh, Robert Prechter was just a, the, on CNBC all the time talking about Elliott Wave. This is 1980s. And I thought, I cannot get confused. I... I, I don't even know the Elliott Wave. I haven't been able to decipher yet. I've tried to study it. I've, 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 I've gone very carefully into it. There's just too many alternatives. My, mine is very clear up until a certain point, and then there are ways of looking at it that make it clear for the extensions to the upside. So what I decided was I couldn't use numbers. I would use letters. And look at that. Peak D is what your, your, your target is. But you can go higher to an F, and you can go higher even to a G. But that entails other things. The primary objective is get you to D. And then you can just use stops and all sorts of things if, you, if it can go higher. So that's the core of the, tech, of, of the analysis. So what have we done here? We've gone to leg C. One penny above um, 15,542.40 takes you to either, it could turn out to be F slash C if it's this move now, or it could be a brand new D. Why do I say F? Because I introduced the previous peak because it did not go lower in the pullback than the previous low of back in uh, that was April the 19th at 14,444 so I'll, I'll continue with this uh, analysis and we'll go on because the weekly chart is the one that's absolutely fascinating in all time frames Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour no it isn't, it's Steve Rhodes Trader's Edge Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesamento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the Forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Steve takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Traditionally at 727-445-1044. We're close to the opening bell, and uh, we're looking at different uh, aspects of my technique, the Chapman Wave methodology, simply looking at the lowest low bar and then counting peaks successfully. Yeah, we've got Leap, uh, Leap Technologies, is it? Uh, we, uh, Leap Wireless International up 9.37, up 117.42%. Um, this is leg D, and it's extending leg D. In the weekly chart, it's only leg C. C and the monthly chart it is leg B. This is really I'm I over the weekend I was looking at so many charts and what they were saying is that the strength the acceleration in percentage in some of the cap uh, some of the stocks, especially some of the small cap stocks, has been not just exponential, but each successively higher peak has continued so that you've got long leg B then a long leg C in other words days before you got your peaks and and that to me says that we're getting to a stage where the smaller caps are coming on strong look at the IWM the IWM right now is at 102.68 close on Friday trading at 102.89 in pre-market uh, but it's leg B 
in the daily. And there's a pattern that I wanted to talk about. This is a pattern that is really important. If you can recognize it, it is just a fantastic pattern. Folks now are beginning to see this pattern more and more. This is what I call the falling axe. Uh, on my uh, CD introducing uh, the Chapman Wave methodology. Um, they, it's, it's, a, it's really a wedge formation. Um, and if you think of it that way, uh, let me see, chapter 24, I believe. Yep, chapter 24. Ah, oh, there it is. And, and most important is that the way you recognize it is that there are lower highs and much lower lows. And once you once you can identify that, there could be a one-to-one -one relationship. This is what's so fantastic. It could be a repellent. But if you break out, there could be a one-to-one -one relationship, and then that can expand to a one-to-two, one-to-three, one-to-three, one-to-five. It's an incredible uh, technique. Look, here it is again, right there. I put it in gray, but I'll make it in, in blue so that you can see. Uh, I'll make it a different color just for now so you can see it. And then it comes in again. And this is the IWM Weekly. And there's that big expansion that you want to see. So it says that leg E in the weekly, you're getting, you're getting into the stage where D or E or F is where you've got to be somewhat careful. But so far, if we extend this week's uh, move up in the weekly chart, also leg E, that's going to be very positive, but it also says a real quick to D and E in the chap wave in the monthly charts, that's when you've got to be a little bit careful. So I have one foot on the accelerator, and I'm about to put one foot on the brake. We've started with a short, I don't know if it's going to work out, I, I hope it works out, but uh, what happened Friday, it looked like it was a good short, then all of a sudden it closed right about the nine period exponential moving average. The tightest stop, I mean, we're talking about like a 2% risk we've got here, I think it might, might even be less, 1.5%, um, uh, and, and it was a small position. But most importantly, what I wanted to say is the daily IWM is in leg B. I always anticipate you're going to go to a leg D if all the technicals are in place. And not only are they in place, the stochastics at 97%. That's the equivalent of being down at 3% or 2.5%. On, on the downside, that would be very negative. So this is very positive, and it's flattening out. If it starts to turn down the stochastic, that's something. But the MACD is expanding. That's that level there. So this is very positive. Look at the Qs, 1, 2, 3. The QQQ series broke out of the left side, right side price time match. That's another technique that I teach in my uh, introducing the Chapman Wave methodology as well as in my Master Trader series, where you can choose a, a particular bar for a midpoint. Sometimes it's the exact low, sometimes it's not. And you get, if you break out in a shorter time period to the upside, that's very positive. It says that there's not only internal strength, but sustained internal strength. So this is now leg B in the queues in the daily weekly is leg e i could call it e slash a which i've done i to think it's a that would say that we've got about another eight weeks or more to the upside before we come back and break the low bar and the low bar in this case would be 67 no 69.15 the low of the week of the 28th of june and most importantly is that it's breaking out of the major resistance that major resistance in the monthly goes back look at this goes all the way back to a trend line that started way back in 2002. So, and once again, quick DTE says, yeah, you've got to be careful. But until you get the signals to say we've got a sell signal to sell mode in the daily, so far there's nothing there. It's, it's still a buy mode in the daily. So that's very impo important. Oh, is that the break? Oh, my goodness, that was quick. 877-927-6648. I'd love to take your calls. The next hour, Tom O'Brien will be out. So I'm going to be here for another half an hour. Please call in, and we're going to go through different uh, different charts. We're going to look at, uh, hopefully, we'll have a chance to look at uh, JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, the XLE. We'll look at CityCore, Google, Netflix, Amazon, Priceline, etc., etc. I'll be right back. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely 
completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. With the stock market flirting with all-time highs and volatility back, now is the perfect time for a two-week free trial to Market Insights. On Monday, June 24th, Tom O'Brien closed out all five open positions in his daily newsletter, Market Insights, with all trades being profitable and ranging from a 2.23% gain all the way to more than an 11% gain in just one position for an incredible 32.7% profit combined between the five trades. Let Tom O'Brien's years of market experience work for you. If you'd like to see for yourself what kind of trading newsletter Tom O'Brien delivers to his clients each morning, then now is a perfect time to sign up for a two-week free trial to his daily newsletter, Market Insights. In a volatile market like we currently have, the potential for fast market moves like we've seen recently is a trader's dream. So don't wait any longer. Sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today at the front page of TFNN.com. With over three decades of commodity trading experience, Andy Hecht has developed a system that combines both technicals and fundamentals. He calls this approach Technomental, and now you can put it to work for yourself with his brand new service, the Technomental Commodity Report. In this weekly newsletter, which comes out each Thursday morning, Andy gives you his analysis of the market price direction bias using fundamentals, and then specific trade recommendations including entry and exit points using technicals. The recommendations in the newsletter are always based on stocks and ETFs, so a futures account is not required, and Andy will often use options in the recommendations as well. Andy will tell you where to get in, where to get out, and he'll outline the risk-reward profile for all recommendations. To get your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report by Andy Hecht while locking in the low introductory rate, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Races, as Steve loves to say. Yep. And they are, actually. The are 14. The S&P's up 0.52. The Q's are up 0.01. You've got um, the GLD, that's gold, is down 0.08. Uh, so we've got, let's see, TLT, that's the bonds, are up 0.03, 107.75 there. Um, most importantly, let's just do a couple of things here real quickly. Let me show you something. The dollar. I'd spoken about the on my show last week. I was speaking about the strength of the dollar uh, in terms of the uh, fast-moving average of the uh, of the MACD, and that fast-moving average here, the green line, 
that's going to be very important. Why? Because if it deflects ab above the red line, it's going to give strength back to the dollar. If it crosses underneath, because the slow stochastic, you can see how deeply it's fallen, that suggests that the dollar is having some t a tough time right here. That says that that nine period exponential moving average right there at 83, 39, 83, 41-ish, that is resistance, and that's exactly what happened. So what we've got is the dollar was up quite strong, and now it's up 14 cents at 83.30. Most importantly, uh, we're going to be watching that. I'm also, I personally am going to be watching the volatility index. I make a big deal for years and years and years and years and years. I've made a big deal about the volatility index, the VIX index. Um, and I, there are many ways of calculating it, but it, it doesn't matter. As far as I'm concerned, it's simply buying pressure, and selling pressure and that's what we're monitoring for my subscribers to my opening calls my daily service i go through my overview today market today section as besides all the other charts that section explains what i'm looking at and why i'm looking at it and today i said in the 1420s or 1430s you can see selling pressure come in if the volatility index remains low in the in the in the, the, the mid 13s that's going to be buying pressure right now it's a 13.98 up 14 cents so i'm be watching that the weekly chart had this incredible smash to the downside after peak D. You remember how time, many times I make a fuss about peak D? Went to 2191 three weeks ago, now straightening down in the 13s. That is a huge decline. So that to me is important because it represents buying pressure. Now, a couple of things that I need to look at. And, and, and the, uh, first of all, looking at the GCQ13, that is the gold contract, which is up at 5 at 1582.19. A little behind here on this contract. The pattern that I'm looking at says that so far it's been okay, the rebound in gold from 1179.40. It's just, it's just okay. There's nothing to write home about. It should really gold at this particular point should be trading at 1350 or higher. Maybe let's call it 1327 to 1350 or higher. Why? Because 1313 is the nine period exponential moving average uh, resistance in the nine period uh, in the weekly chart. It has been not once since uh, the uh, gold contract closed above uh, that nine period moving average back on the 23rd of November 2012 at 1759.90 was the high. After that, it closed out, and since then, it has not closed above. Well, there was a little sneak above it on the 18th week of the 18th of January, but it immediately turned down. It has not closed above it. So, on, on a time basis, on a relative scale basis, I would say it's absolutely key that gold starts to move higher that the gold stocks start to participate, that if the euro, EUR, USD, can try to form a base here and use that nine period moving average now as a support. Now let me show you something here about left side, right side. Look at this. The, uh, well, in this case, I'm just using it as a base. The whole base area of the euro between the, uh, the most recent low is one point, I should have typed in, 1.27546. But it's gone to this level, one, two, three, Let's call it four times in the past uh, year, a uh, year and a quarter, since April of last year. Oh, whoa, whoa, what am I talking about? April of this year. Yeah, April of this year. I'm looking at a daily chart, not a weekly chart. And that says that that could set in place a bounce, a yo-yo bounce, back to the upside. There was the 133 area if, if the dollar pulls back sharper and if gold starts to move higher. And I'm just anticipating right now that gold is in a a bounce. It is not in a reflexive rally that says, the V-shaped rally that says, oh boy, gold is just going to soar to them. It just is in a bounce mode. It could be a, a sharp percentage move, but I'm going to go one step at a time. And I'm also saying that the, the strength that I'm looking at in gold says, uh, in the dollar says, how the dollar pulls back and where it pulls back to how the euro can rally if it's able to take out um, last week's high of 1.3205 that was made on the 11th that's going to be very important in fact if the euro even gets to 1.3134 it's going to be a very big positive because it's halfway into the inverted roman candle wick of uh, three days ago i'm watching this very closely for a couple of reasons one is you've got 
you've got the metals per se when you're looking at a silver s I, i'm going to just go to the slv chart for the moment the slv chart this is not a very positive chart at this particular point it's trying to rally, but it's just making an H has gone to a larger H pattern, like an M pattern. That weekly chart is just horrible. So until silver can really break decisively into the 20.30 area, I have to consider that this is just a, a feeble bounce. I suspect that there will be something a little bit more because the 200 period moving average in the weekly chart has been hit twice. Last time it was hit back in the... Um, Back in the 2008-2009 period, it went underneath and then broke above and started rallying. So this is going to be uh, an important watch because the MACD is horrible on the weekly chart. And stochastics at 8.81, that's the equivalent on the upside of 81.5%, uh, 91.5%. So um, uh, I, I'm looking at this, I'm saying, okay, it's got to come from the daily and it's going to come this week. This is an absolutely important week for gold. Why? Because if the GLD which is trading at uh, 124.33, starts to break down from here. Nice action today so far. It's at 124.35. Then I have to say, uh, let me double check, 124.36. Yeah, this is already leg C. And it's not done very much. It hasn't even filled the gap from a couple of weeks ago. So, yes, it's good action, but it's definitely not great action. And the stochastic still only at 74%. The MACD is turning up. I like the action. I'm kind of impressed that it is able to make a concerted to the, uh, effort to the upside, but I have to tell you that it's really disappointing in terms of the V-shaped pattern that would have meant that you've not only got a bounce in gold and silver stocks, but you're going to have a really strong rally. At this particular point, I think it's a nice rally. We'll see what happens after that. Now, I'm going to just look at something here for a moment, uh, copper. I want to look at copper. Why? Because high-grade copper, HG, now let me just go to HG, the continuous contract, I've updated. I made a peak D top. Let me look at SCCO, which is always a nice indicator. Now, nah, flat, nothing. This is Southern uh, Copper. This used to be uh, from Peru. Let me look at the JJC. I believe it's JJC. That's the Copper JCC. Uh, let me look at JJC again. Yeah, there you are. JJC is, in fact, the IPATH DJ AIG Copper uh, Trust. And uh, it's just so, so, yeah, this is not such a good sign. So, if I put it together with FXI, the FXI, in fact, is the, uh, that is the iShares FTSE China 25 ETF. Big H pattern that goes to a smaller H pattern in the monthly chart. Left side, right side price time match says, yep, this is the moment that it better rally. It got repelled at the nine period moving average. But so far, it's just so-so action. If the FXI trading at 33.42, goes to the 34.50 to 35.20 area anytime this week, I'm going to say, great. That's the first consecutive week of strength that we've had in a very long time. Now let's go to the XLF. The XLF is, of course, the S&P Select Financial Spider Fund. It's extended its leg D up. And that says to me, leg D's where you've got to be careful in the Chapman Wave song. It says, block goes up, market goes down, supposed to buy at the low, sell at the high. You know what we tend to do. We buy at the high and we sell at the low. Chapman Wave is what you need. You buy with the stoke and the old MACD. There's the stoke and the stochastic and the MACD. You follow the wave. Uh, you follow the price and wait for a peak. Higher highs is what we seek. Higher high peaks, that is. High is what we seek. You follow the wave. The wave goes to A and then to B. A to B. Even the anticipated C and D, so that buy signal to buy mode, that's when it flashes a cautionary light. But all you've got to do is make your stops real tight. Now look at the weekly chart. Suddenly it goes to E and F. A bell rings so loud it can make you deaf. So what you can do, which way to go? You sell at the high and you buy at the low. So what happened? It went to 20.35 in peak F. It pulls back pretty sharply. That's the sharpest move the, the, the XLF has had in a very long time. Goes down to 18.58. And at 18.58 becomes a reflex action for a spring back above the 9 period moving average. And now it's broken a new high. Here comes the one problem with the Chapman Wave methodology where you say to yourself, oh, oh. What on earth am I going to call this? So all I can do is go to the next letter, G, and call it a possible parallel wave count, a G slash B. 
Now, how did that come about? Because the um, there's a chance that there was a down move in the peak D to the E. And, in fact, that starts a brand new move, and that F becomes an A, and that G, uh, G becomes a B. But it doesn't negate all the other work that was on in between. It just says that going forward, you want to now treat it as if you've recycled higher. So those are, it's rare, but there are times in the Chapman Wave where other techniques that I teach become really important and really help you. And because of that, you're able to stay in the game a much longer period. Because if you were thinking peak F and you sold everything, you thought, oh my goodness, you would not have been looking at the weekly chart, the monthly chart, which said peak C should go to a D. And now we're in leg D. And that is the most important thing. And if this D pushes even just a little bit higher, then all of a sudden the repellent line of the 200 period exponential moving average right there break down back in uh, February of 2008 at 2561, plunges to 5,088 cents. All of a sudden, for the first time, the 200 period exponential moving average of 2234 is becoming a magnet. That's the reason why we're looking at what? We're looking at uh, City came out today. Where's City traveling? Where's it at? It's in leg D. It gapped up to leg D. The MACD, the moving average convergence divergence is good. Stochastic's at 92%. That's really good. And the weekly chart says we could have had a recycle here as well. I'm calling it a peak F slash B. If it goes one penny above 5356, it's at 5176 right now. Let us see. That starts leg C up in the, in, in the, in the weekly. The monthly chart is in fact uh, city group, let me just do this, move it a little tighter so you can see, is in fact in leg D right now. So there's a consistency here that is just, uh, it's, it's compelling. And if you look at the WFC, that's Wells Fargo, leg D started today. That's very important. So we're getting a little toppy as far as I can see. Uh, shorter term, uh, leg C in the weekly chart. Uh, leg E, left side, right side, price time match. Oh, my God, look at that. Exactly as I, I typed it in ages ago, this is the very month that you want to see a test of the 40, 40s to, to the 44.52 previous uh, major high in Wells Fargo, WFC. Right now it's at 57 cents. And you've got the next one will be uh, JP Morgan, JP Morgan, JPM, J, JP. Oh, long weekend, huh? JPF. Leg D, peak D actually, pulling back a little bit. Peak D, is that a D or is that an E in the weekly chart? 55.90 was the high of the week of the 31st of uh, May. And 55.87 is this uh, last week's high, so it's still peak D. It needs to get leg D up in the monthly chart. So all of these charts are still very, very positive. Um... So I just needed to go through that. Now, most importantly, what I wanted to look at was, um, I wrote down, yeah, look at this. You've got Google. Remember the methodology that I spoke of? That uh, you're always looking for a leg. You're looking for a buy signal to go to a buy mode that should take you to at least a peak D. Well, lo and behold, the Google is in leg D as we speak in the left side price time match. No, there was none. Should have been like that. I had that done. I had to redo it. Let me just do it again. That one there. In a, in a shorter time period, right there. Oh, yeah, very shorter time period. It's broken out slightly in leg D. And the stochastic is at 94%. The MACD is not great. It's good, but not great. The, the, the weekly chart is in leg F slash B, and the monthly chart is in leg D. So that's getting a little bit extended, but it's still very positive. Netflix and FLX is at... Um, a monthly chart leg D, all time high three hundred four point seven nine, trading right now two fifty four forty down two point ninety. Leg C up in the weekly chart and leg D in the weekly isn't it in the daily. How many charts are going to leg D? I, I'm I'm very close to at least some kind of a bit of a pullback here, but it's not the pullback that we're looking for. I think that comes later in the week. Uh, Vassal Chapman sitting in for Steve Rhodes, and I'll be back straight off these messages at 877-927-6648. I'm usually on at 11 o'clock till noon. I'll be on at that time today, but I'm doing Steve's show while he's away. 
you take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long Long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil subscribers closed out a short position at Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program. The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report, which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks, as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. Next on TFNN. Four sixty four S and P's uh, unsure. Well, just about minus point forty seven and sixteen seventy nine. Comp index is uh, down to thirty five ninety seven. You've got gold up six point ninety now, slowly moving higher as, as uh, the dollar is weakening a bit. Uh, we've got uh, silver up point oh five at nineteen eighty four. Platinum's up seven at fourteen fifteen. Uh, high grade copper down to a three one four. Uh, you know, I I'm watching this so closely. It's really important. And crude oil has done very well.
Um, it's now down 17 cents at 105.78. If you went to the pump over the weekend, you'll know that <laughs> Crudel's done very, very well. And bonds are up 18.30 seconds at 134.19. I wanted to show you something here. Apple is actually doing very nicely. That's the V-shaped pattern that I wanted to see in the gold contract. I wanted the GLD. Uh, it's not yet. Uh, it's not that. It's not the same yet. Uh, it's getting there, but it's not walking the nine EMA as, as, as Apple is. So Apple says, I've got some residual strength. I'm not doing great. I've done that arch, the, the arch formation in the uh, weekly chart. Let me show you my, my uh, CD, uh, what that pattern looks like. Uh, it's what I call the H pattern. Uh, and if you want to go there, we'd right here, we'll just scroll down. See, the H pattern keeps coming down like a scallop to the downside until it finally settles and it tries to make an H that goes to an M pattern. That M pattern has a whole bunch of connotations well look at this the ancients trying to make the m pattern we're going to see what happens to apple i just think apple needs a lot more time before it can become the the the, the stock that it once was uh, and that's going to take a great effort. It just needs to pull back. I've got a left side, right side price time match that says that somewhere in November of this year, there's a chance that Apple could pull back to the 353 level, but that's going to be contingent upon pulling back and breaking the uh, 388 support that it had uh, back in June. So we're looking at Apple, but look at um, Amazon. Amazon right now is in leg. Um, e slash B in the weekly chart, fabulous looking chart. Monthly chart is F. I could recycle. This could be B. I'm just being as conservative as I, as I can. And the weekly chart is in leg C. Leg C continues today because it's it's higher than last 20, uh, 40 cents above last week's uh, uh, Friday's high. And the MACD is at 97%. This is going to go on for a little bit. These stocks are acting really well. So um, I wanted to go through those. Uh, uh, most importantly, if you look at like a cell gene, Celgene has become one of the NASDAQ leaders. It's uh, trading at 133.92, down 64 cents, gapped up the other day on some news. Leg B, I, that could be an F, but I'm calling it a B for now because it's so strong. And in my technique, when there's a gap up and you don't fill the gap immediately, there's a whole bunch of things that I look at. And what I look at is an inside Chapman Wave bicycle that can go to peak A, B, C, D. We're going to be watching Celgene real closely because at some point within... Another three to maybe five sessions, I suspect, sell jeans and have quite a bit of a pullback and come back to retest the whole 120s area to see what the support is. But the monthly chart is a leg C. That is really, um, that, that's really important. Now, let's look at, um, oh, let's look at... There it is. Um, I want you to look at crude oil, but the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to go to the CLQ. I'm not sure which contract is being traded. And this is made a peak B. I could call it an F, but there's nothing here that says an F at 89%. Make these good. So it's a peak B, should go to a C, and the monthly chart, the weekly chart is in leg D. Very quick A to B to C to D, but D isn't the usual nominal higher high in a very quick four peaks to the upside. In fact, it is uh, extended much higher. I will continue with this line of action. Uh, my show at 11 o'clock, the Tiger Technicians Hour. Thanks for being here. If you want to check out my service, it's the opening call. Go to the front page of TFN, get two weeks free. Very comprehensive look at the markets with my traders' corner and our positions. I'll be back in one hour. Stay tuned for Tom O'Brien and have a great day. I will see the rest of you at 11 o'clock. Nowhere, spelled N-O-W-H-E-R-E. -E. At one point, we've all been there. Whether it be our health, career, or our finances, some might be there right now. So where are you when it comes to your trading and investing? Better yet, where would you like to be? The good news? I can take you from nowhere to now here right now. Same letters, N-O-W-H-E-R-E, -E, just a totally different emphasis and focus. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN, and on July 25th at 6.30 p.m., I'm going to share with you a trading strategy that I began on May 10th when the S&P was at 1627 and closed at the same price eight weeks later. That's right, the S&P went nowhere versus a trading strategy that produced a 100% hypothetical return at that same period of time, and it's now here for you. Subscribers to my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability, have free access to this exciting live workshop. The trend is your friend. All the details are on the homepage of TFN.com. Decisions shape your destiny, and your trading destiny is now here for you.